your people. So I want to do another video with reference to the Liverpool Real Madrid Champions League final and reference to my previous video that I've done on that. Now, I was thinking about this because obviously in the press at the moment, they're going against the Liverpool fans, going against the English, promoting the uh, English football hooligan thing like they've done for many, many years. And uh, it got me thinking. Now, I remember the High Soul Stadium disaster, Liverpool-Juventus game in 1985. Now, I remember this. I remember watching it and I can still picture watching it to this day. It was shocking. Um, and I was, I was 10 years old, so 37 years ago, and I can still remember watching it. And something popped in my head today and I thought, oh yeah, I remember seeing there was a guy with a, like a, a, a mask, like a scarf up, covering half of his face up to his nose, holding a gun. And I suddenly remembered this image. I was like, oh yeah, man, I forgot about that. So I started Googling it. Juventus, fan, Heisel Stadium, gun. Nothing. Not a single picture and virtually nothing on it. Well, except for this one piece. Why is there no Juventus gun picture from Heisel? This is the only thing on the whole internet about that image that I suddenly remembered from 1985 and I probably haven't thought about it since then. It popped back in my head and I can still see that image in my mind's eye, clear as, as it was back then. There is nothing on the internet. And this is what this article from this guy says. And there is literally nothing on this image. No footage, no pictures. So where is this image and why have they got rid of it? Answer, because it doesn't fit the narrative. Now, getting back to the previous picture as I was showing you there with the red animals and as I was saying, Juventus fans and lots of Liverpool fans at the time said Juventus provoked this. Now, I'm not here to attack Italians or attack Juventus fans because no doubt those Juventus fans or whoever started whatever are part of it because this is what goes on. Now, this even says here that um, or, or in this article that this guy suggests and he only suggests it that the gunman was one of the Juventus owner's family or party. So, I don't know if that's true or not, but this is what this guy suggests and what he remembers at the time. Either way, this image does not exist on the internet, not in video form, not in photo form. It does not exist. Why? As I said, it doesn't fit the narrative. Now, here's a picture here of uh, Juventus fans holding weapons. And I remember all this stuff. You know, the more I'm thinking about this, the more I remember it. You know, Juventus fans pitched during the disorder ahead of the match. The blame for Heist was initially laid on the Liverpool fans. So, you know, it was all about blaming the Liverpool fans. I mean, just look at this here. This is Juventus fans. If you, I think it was about 10 years ago or so. English, dirty, drunk, infamous. I think this was from a game in 2010 when they played Liverpool. I mean, you know blatantly blaming the Liverpool fans. Now, I'm not here to excuse the Liverpool fans that did whatever. I don't know exactly went on that day, but from what I read at the time and what I'm reading now is that, you know, it, there was a fight and that it, it all kicked off and then this wall fell down, people trying to escape and people died. Now, from what I've read from the people that and 14 Liverpool fans got convicted for it, um, you know, that, that one minute they're having a fight, next minute a load of people are dead. You know, so there, th this fight happened and this wall fell down and that's how people died. Now, there's also lots of um, people saying uh, that the, the Juventus fans had knives. Now, I can't say if that's true or if this, these fans are making that up, but I can tell you that I remember that this image of this guy with a gun 
on the terraces with his face half hidden was on the news and it was talked about at the time but has now disappeared and you cannot find that on the internet at all and this guy agrees with me and this is the only thing about it so why have they got that rid of that image as i said it doesn't fit the narrative what is the narrative for whatever reason to blame liverpool fans to discredit liverpool fans and english fans as well now as i said there is a narrative here there is an agenda and I can prove that here with the numbers and how they work, showing how they work and how they link everything up. So, as I said in the previous video, for those that haven't seen it, 37th anniversary of Heysel was on this weekend when they played this game. Hence why this game was 37 minutes late from starting. Now, I can't believe that I missed this, but shout out to James Ellie Free in the comments that uh, brought this up. Um, can't believe I didn't spot it myself because I usually spot the 33 things straight away. Um, but not only was this 37 minutes, 37 years since high school, 37 minutes, they showed it there. This was also, this year is the 33rd year of the Hillsborough anniversary. So, I mean, that's just so blatant. Um, and for those of you that don't understand how they work and why they use these numbers and what the significance is of the number 33 to these people, well, this is about 33 degree Freemasons and the Scottish Rite. Now, this goes back many, many years. Now, as you can see here, the Scottish Rite 33 degree Freemasons and if you see the crown on top of the double-headed eagle it has a 33 in it. So 33 years since Hillsborough happened Liverpool play Real Madrid in the Champions League 37 years since Heysel and the game starts 37 minutes late. You see how it works? So let's talk about the Freemasons in football. Well, basically, the Freemasons started football, run football, and control football. Like they do the world, they do football. And all sports, because it's all controlled by the Freemasons. So once you wake up to this, you know, you're breaking the illusion. Because all of these sports are controlled by the Freemasons. And the more I look and the more I research, the more I see this is scripted and planned out to a level that is incomprehensible. So as you can see here, Football Association was formed on the proposal of Ebenezer Cobb Morley at the Freemasons Tavern. Now, the Freemasons Tavern now doesn't exist. Something else is built on top of it. But there is a Freemasons Arms pub uh, not far from it that celebrates all of the history of the Freemasons Tavern. Now let's talk about the Freemasons within football. Now it seems in modern times they don't talk about who's a Freemason, but we can look back at the English managers that are Freemasons. Sir Alf Ramsey when England won the World Cup in 1966. What a surprise England won the World Cup with a Freemason in charge. So. What age was he made a Freemason? Oh, look, the age of 33. Do you see how it works? And then Don Revy, the English manager, was a Freemason. Ron Greenwood, the English manager, was a Freemason. And guess who else is a Freemason? <laughs> yep, Gareth Southgate. Now, they don't say that he's a Freemason, but here he is holding up a trophy outside the Freemason's arms, as I mentioned earlier, the pub that represents the Freemasons Tavern in London. So, you know, make of that what you will. And as I said in my previous video, this is the image that made me realize what was going on. You know, the triggering, the trauma from Hillsborough, now it even makes more sense because it was 33 years since Hillsborough. 
37 years since Heysel, the 37 minute late kickoff. You see how it works. All of this is just satanic rituals by these Freemasons to divide and conquer and control humanity. And they've been doing it for thousands of years. But we are waking up and their time is over. Peace!